It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And tonight's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Colts and the Cardinals. And it comes your way next on Madden NFL 22. We find ourselves at the home of the world's first retractable natural grass field as you get a look inside State Farm Stadium in Glendale. So this was the scene a moment ago. The Cardinals emerging from their tunnel, and we are ready for football as the Cards get set to match up with the Indianapolis Colts. Brandon Garden alongside, as always, my partner Charles Davis and CD. In the few moments here before kickoff, let's give these folks at home a look at these two offenses by the numbers. What stands out to you? Brandon, I just continue to be amazed by the analytics of the game, and it's an area where I continue to concentrate and study because I'm still trying to figure out how coaches and coordinators can really crunch the numbers and find where exactly on the field the defense is vulnerable. It's the game within the game. And if you really dive into it, it can be endlessly fascinating. Here's the putter, Rigoberto Sanchez, on to get us started. And we are underway here on EA Sports. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. Arizona Cardinals offense coming out here for the first time, and you get a peek at Kyler Murray, the dangerous offensive weapon now in his third season in the National Football League. Drafted with the idea that he'd be one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the NFL when he put it all together. We've been seeing that progress throughout his career. This guy's legs, we knew they were phenomenal. Arm, top notch. But now we're seeing his mind come into the game. Reed's defense is better and better each and every week and is showing patience as a passer as well. Not as eager to exit the pocket, finding guys downfield for bigger plays. Murray now on first down. Flushed out right. Murray has the first down and more. And Murray with a smart move there at the end of the play. Picks up the first down and then slides to the ground. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. from Colts territory. Here's a first and 10 at the 47. Shotgun now for Murray. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. For this defense, CD, and going up against Kyler Murray here, what's the secret to keeping him in check? <laughs> Having better athletes than him, which is really unrealistic. So I go way back in football. They used to have a coverage called the umbrella coverage with four defenders back deep. Now you want to try and move that umbrella up front with Kyler Murray, kind of surround him and keep him hemmed into the pocket. Because if he breaks out, he's going to hurt your defense in a big way with his legs. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. To throw is Murray. And that's complete. It's green here. 
And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. How about this for an opening drive decision? You got fourth and short, just outside of field goal range in all likelihood. What do you do? I'm going for it. I've got to go get it right now. I want to establish a tone. It's early in the game. I want to let my offense know that I believe in them. And you know something else? I let my defense know I believe in them also by taking that gamble. If we don't get it, it's okay. You guys will cover for me. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They're going for it. It's Murray. on oh, the slant complete to Green. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. Man, deflating for the defense. They can't get the stop here. Throwing again, Murray. Eluding the pressure right. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Now the first carry for Chase Edmonds. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Here we go. Here we go. Out of the gun, here's Murray. That's out to the flat for Edmonds. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. But he did everything but get him in the end zone there. But now they're set up. Golden opportunity. Strong opening drive, and they're knocking on the door. And the way that they did it. Now look where they are on the field. All right, this is naturally set up for a running play, isn't it? But with his ability to throw the football, his accuracy on this drive, you might want to think about it. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cardinals. Zach Ertz. There to make the grab. And the Cardinals take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. They got to love that. Nine play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Prater for the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all, and it winds up in a touchdown for Arizona. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Colts offense ready to go here for the first time. And the former Philadelphia Eagle turned Indianapolis Colt Carson Wentz set to take over here at the controls in his first year in Indianapolis. And Carson Wentz made the move from Philadelphia to Indianapolis back in mid-February. And although his last season is an eagle, not one that he wants to remember, he's now reunited with his former offensive coordinator and current Colts head coach Frank Reich and gets to play behind one of the best offensive lines in football. A great place to resurrect his career. And he's 
going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. Give the credit there to Jordan Phillips getting in the backfield for the tackle for loss. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Working from the gun, Wentz. Going for Hilton, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 25, and they will score. It's a pick six for the Cardinals' touchdown. Now this defense looking like they have come to play the pick six, and just like that, it's 13-0 early on. Well, go back with me to our training camp visit. What do we hear during these drills? Oh, pass. pass. Ball. Ball's in the air. And then my favorite. Oski. That's the interception. <laughs> that means everybody finds someone to block. Block them legally. Stay on your feet. And they get it done. Touchdown. Now Prater to add the PAT. And it's good to make it 14-0. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Carson Wentz, along with his offense, heading back out there for their next possession. And now, Charles, this becomes a pretty important second drive for them. They're already down a pair of scores here in the first quarter. As you noted, they're down two scores, and to me, they're down a possession or a service break if this were tennis, right? Because they just gave one up. Only their second drive now, run their offense, try and get back into the game that way, and then look for some help from their defense. Try to forget about that pick six last time out. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. From the 27, Wentz. Being chased out left. And Wentz going to slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Now's the time. Don't the last it. drive, remember, similar situation. He forced the ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. He'll get eight on the keeper there. It'll be second and a couple. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Byron Murphy, and a return across midfield and to the 46-yard line. 
And not the first quarter that he was hoping for. Now two interceptions thrown. Well, the good ones, they find a way to compartmentalize, right? Put these behind them, have that short memory, but understand why they threw the two interceptions. They go on and usually play a pretty decent game. Other quarterbacks, they have a hard time getting past it and often put the ball up for grabs the rest of the ball game. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And they had the touchdown during the last drive, and I'm guessing that you like the balance they had on that last drive. And I loved it. Forget liking it. Absolutely love what they were doing because to be ahead of a defense that much where every play call you have, run or pass, is working pretty well for you. Makes you look like a genius. It really does. It also lets you know that your preparation was pretty good, and now the defense has to do all the adjusting. After the turnover, here's Murray. This is caught. It's Kirk. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Murray flips his forward on a jet sweep. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays. You know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. On second and 11 now, Murray. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Let's go, D. Draw play, Edmonds. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. And now out is the Cardinal field goal team here. Prater's kick is good. And the lead will grab. It's now 17-0. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. So an early advantage now and a good one. 17-0 our score as they kick this one away. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. To this point, the results have not been good. Two possessions, two turnovers. And that's obviously something that can't continue, but to go a little bit deeper on that one, I would think about some play calls now, not even necessarily to my best player, but to someone I can trust with the ball, try and get things settled down a little bit. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Flush to his right. He'll have a first down past the 40. And Wentz going to slide to his stop. He does have the first down. 
Normally we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this with both of these guys running the ball well? Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks <laughs> have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. <laughs> Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Here's Wentz to throw. Throws this one right side to Pascal. That catch good for only a couple. Second down now. It's Taylor. And he'll get it across midfield and down into Cardinal territory. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The cards going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. To throw, it's Wentz. The pass underneath, here's Hines with it. And he is going to have a coach first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. One well, of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. First and 10, Taylor now. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Good work, boys. Exactly go. what they needed right Let's there go. because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Wentz going to give this to Taylor, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Now Wentz on third down. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Almost feels like anything you can do, we're going to try and match or do better. We've already seen one touchdown pass from the opposition. They tried to equal it on that throw. And now the Colts call on their field goal unit here. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. Badgley able to punch this one through. And they're on the board at least here. It's now 17 to 3. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, 
you're in the wrong lot of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And no run back here for Moore. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25. The football going back over to Arizona now. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. They'll start on the ground with Edmonds. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. Back in Arizona, second quarter action. It's the Cardinals in possession as they're looking at a second down and nine to go. On play action, it's Murray. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. And able to find Kirk complete. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. They fake the handoff. Now Murray. Finding Green complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Six yards left on second down. Now Murray again. He's got green. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 26. Hartley sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep and curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. And a re 
reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there forcing a loss on that play. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Murray going to throw. And that will be caught, but out of the end zone, says the field judge. It's ruled incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. The Cardinals on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. On the screen, this is Edmonds. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. Boy, that one was well read defensively, and this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retake center stage. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try and loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. First and 10 and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. Wentz now to throw. Take it in by the tight end, Doyle. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. Second and 11. Here's Hines. Oh, able to avoid him. And he'll get this one up to the 26. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Partner, how he managed to get positive yardage out of that run, I have no idea. But a little juking, a little moving, got it done. Got him two yards. From the gun on third down, wins. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half.
Wentz now on first down. He'll let this go for the end zone. And this ball incomplete. Uh, looked very much to be a catchable ball. He could not hang on. Second down coming up. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. To throw again on second down. Wentz. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Off the option, here's Taylor. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. But a good play is made on defense. Oftentimes, leverage is the key to everything. Defensive line not getting turned. All the other guys making sure they're in the right spot. And on that play, they were able to stop him short of a first down. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Kyler Murray going to lead the Cardinals back out on offense. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 16. Throwing to start the drive. Murray. And that's incomplete. And I could see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the gun, Murray. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. The Cardinals on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Throwing now is Murray. And he will find the rookie from Purdue. That's Rondell Moore. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A big connection on that one. 32 yards. Big plays are starting to become the trend here in this first half, and everything that they've tried has worked. And there's another example right there. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. Murray now. Throw right side is going to be caught by Kirk. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On second down, this is Edmonds. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a bead on the play, get a running start, and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. The Cardinals on third down. 
Two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. To throw is Murray. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. Going over reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can't go with a, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Murray. He'll swing that out to Edmonds. Oh, Edmonds has it knocked loose. And the Colts pick it up. Gets through and now an opening. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles calls because now if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. The previous play is under review. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that challenge is a successful one. The fumble on first down. Now here's second down. Following that fumble recovery, it's Murray. Complete on the quick throw to Moore. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. <laughs> to throw on second and 10, Murray. Quick slant caught by Kirk. And the Cardinals are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Throwing again, Murray. Open man, Green, he's got it. Touchdown, Arizona. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Cardinals are able to add on to their first half lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. point and the lead is now 24 a drive there of just four plays and the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown
After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. For the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. They trail here by 24 points. Got to get going soon, you'd have to think, as they come up first and 10. This one right side to Pascal. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Simple drag route here. Lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. To throw his wins. And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. And that stop, Charles, just looked like a case where a speedy defensive end is a little bit quicker than the offensive tackle. Yeah, it makes it difficult for a tackle to determine what exactly to do. Do you do the kick slide and try and get back in the pocket and meet him there? Do you meet him on the line of scrimmage where they call a quick set? In any event, right now, he's having his troubles. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Third down, here's Taylor. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Now the card's going to call another timeout, their second. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return, and the Cards will take over first and 10. Now Kyler Murray ready to get back under center, and he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence, does a great deal for your team, gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. So first and 10 now from the 30. To throw, it's Murray. He's going to air it out deep for Green. And got his man complete. And all the way down to the 24-yard line. A huge play there for Arizona. I'm seeing a lot of hands on hips in that secondary, and I suspect a lot of mumbling under their breath as well because this defense has had no answer for the passing game here in the first half. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. 
more coming. There's more where I came from. Now Murray. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Rondell Moore as the first half is winding down. And the Cards would extend their lead here just before halftime. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there. Unable to do so, that makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Extra point good by Prater. And the lead will swell by one more. So that drive, four plays. And it winds up in a touchdown for Arizona. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And we'll see what they opt to do with just 14 seconds remaining until intermission. Now a good running play here to start the drive. That'll net him 14 yards as they pick up the first. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. <laughs> to throw, it's wins. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a round. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, a check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Colts. And they did have some success running the football in those first two quarters. And that might be something they continue to work on as they try to get back in this game. Meanwhile, for the Cardinals, you get a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And whatever they've done, it's worked, as they have the lead through two quarters of play. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. And they have a mountainous deficit looming in front of them. It was really, Charles, a disaster of a first half. So where do they go from here? Well, first thing they have to remember is that what's done is done, and there's no going back. And now you have to play this drive by drive. Obviously, come back in this spot, pretty unlikely. But you still have to go out, take pride in your work, and try and put something together here in the second half.
They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Second and seven. Throwing now is Wentz. Can't get away, and he's taken down. Corey Peters slipping in and getting the sack. So one quick, easy analysis about why they struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. Well, the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Now after the sack, Winston the Colts, they're left looking at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, Pascal able to haul that one in. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Absolutely have to credit the pass protection there on third down because he had all sorts of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through his progressions, and you just have to know that sooner or later, someone's going to work his way open if you don't get to him. Make sure those guys up front get plenty of credit and recognition for a job well done. From midfield, here's Wentz. And that is incomplete. Wow, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll try the left side with Taylor. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They need to make up some ground, and they did. Now Wentz on third down. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half. Incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. They've really distanced themselves. They have put the pedal to the metal, I guess, so to speak. So definitely have them in the rearview mirror, don't they? I mean, you're exactly right. Being able to string together these drives that end up in points, it's almost like a run in basketball to create that distance, and they're on a really big-time one right yeah, now. It becomes contagious, doesn't it? It absolutely does, because oftentimes it translates to your defense as well, because they're excited about getting the ball back for their offense that's playing so well. Well, they are clicking right now. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. To throw again on second down, Murray. And completes it to Kirk over the middle. 
They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And the hitch route has run really well. That jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space. All you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. Murray going to try to throw on third down. And able to find Kirk complete. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I certainly don't want to pile on, but this defense has just not been up to the challenge in this game. And this continues as we see here. Coverage, not been very good. Soft in spots. And there's an easy throw and catch for another first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Murray again. Green with a catch left side. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. From the gun, Murray. And his pass incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Out of the gun, here's Murray. That's out to the flat for Edmonds. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackling. Here's Andy Lee now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Push it back. And he'll go down for a loss inside his own five at the four. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty, but when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Now again to Taylor. Shifts by him. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. But they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments and usually only at halftime but the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. 
Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And that will come the offense as they take over. Well, the football back in the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 43. Off play action, Murray. That's complete to Demetrius Harris, the tight end. Touchdown, Cardinals! Demetrius Harris, 57 yards. And the Cardinals are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And for as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards and just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And if you're wondering how fast he was going, next-gen stats clapped him at close to 21 miles an hour. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They'll run on first down. It's Taylor. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They run once more with Taylor. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. But when you go from second to four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Wentz. Looking deep for Hilton. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. What we've seen so far in this game, they are not going to allow a big shot over the top. You can have whatever you want underneath. They'll give you that, but they're not going to let you beat them deep. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. We'll call that a 41-yard punt. The net a little greater, though, following a loss on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
Kyler Murray going to lead the Cardinals back out on offense. He has been on his A game. We're in the third quarter. He's already in search of touchdown pass number five. He's played so well that it's hard for me to take my eyes off of him, even when he's not on the field. I keep finding my eyes finding him on the bench in between series, wondering what he's going to do next. This has been a blast to watch him play the position. Uh, he's been spectacular with those four touchdown passes. Murray flips his forward on a jet sweep. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one goes for 24 yards. For an effective play there, getting their wideouts involved in the run game. And what they're always hoping on that type of a play, that they can get to the end of the line and have a chance to turn it upfield as he did there. That means they controlled the blocking and took care of the defensive end or the outside linebacker to give him that lane. And I guess I need to clarify, I said getting their wideouts involved in the run game, but of course that was actually a pass as he popped it forward. They'll run on first down, Edmonds. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Darius Leonard, the All-Pro, in on the tackle. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Second down and another run with Edmonds. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and 10. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Time to go to work. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Throwing now is Murray. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Here's Andy Lee now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark. Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. In that time for the sack, say hello to Chandler Jones. He was still looking through his progressions and going through his receiver options, and while he was doing that, the defense got to him quickly in the pocket. And it was a great example of zone coverage. Well executed, well coordinated. All the receivers were covered, and he couldn't evade the rush back in the pocket. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. On the handoff, Taylor fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. He's going to sling this deep downfield, and he's got it. What a catch on the sideline. A big play that time through the air, 38 yards. 
I tell you, when Carson Wentz can really step into one and get that 6-5 frame behind it, he can really launch it. And what was amazing to me was the fact he was able to get as much on the ball as he did because he was on the run. Normally, when you're on the move like that, you don't expect the ball to go that far. You would think you need your lower body to be involved. That was an all-arm throw. Throwing on first is Wentz. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. There's a nice pickup right there. And after watching that play, I'm thinking about all the lost opportunities that they've had so far in this game. But right now, just focus on continuing to move the ball the way they did on the last play. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. Left side, Doyle with it. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. Wentz going to throw. Middle of the field to the tight end, Doyle. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Welcome back to the desert. We're in Glendale. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. So not quite a first and goal just yet as they come up now second and inches. Again, it's Wentz. And that one finds the ground, breaking a string of five straight completions. And it brings up second down. No third, third down. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. The offense on third down tonight, they're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Got a man, it's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts touchdown. Yeah, baby, yeah. Come on, let's a go. A five-yard touchdown catch, and the Colts are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. That's a whole lot of points still to be down, but congratulations, they're still fighting, and they scored another touchdown. It's like my old high school coach used to say, Charles, he said, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and sometimes you wish you never had showed up. <laughs> Could have saved the gas money, the hotel, <laughs> what have you, huh? Michael Badgley on for the extra point. Right, and they make the score a little bit more respectable here in our final quarter of play. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And Moore, he's going to sit on this one, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. The Cardinal offense takes back over. 
Well, this ball game certainly has gotten a little out of hand. This is normally when they say you, you got to fill. This is fill time for guys like you and I. But yeah, to, to be frank, just a dominating performance. Really impressive what we've seen. It is. And I'm glad that you went in that direction because otherwise we're going to have to talk about the museum tour we took yesterday. Which was also impressive. Which was also very yeah. impressive. But this game, how they've done it, offense, defense, special teams, they put it all together. And I gotta tell you, I am beyond impressed by what I've seen from this team. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense, diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Here's a give to Edmonds running to the right. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Cardinals on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This time it's third and three. Shotgun now for Murray. Ertz over the middle. And he'll be tackled right on the chop at a 45. Well, partner, nothing but praise for me for this offense. They have been tremendous all night long. They knew what they had to do to unlock the defense. And let's face it, this has been a master class in offensive football that we've been here to witness. They'll try the jet sweep with Kirk. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Edmonds running out of the shotgun. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. But we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. They'll run with Edmonds again. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here's Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for Arizona. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Indy set to go on offense once more. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now wins. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. On second and 10, Wentz. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. Five yards, now it's third and five. 
One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. From the gun on third down, Wentz. Fighting Hilton on the slant. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On first down, Wentz. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. No gain on the screen there in second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Now Wentz again. He's got Jack Doyle, and he lost the football, and the Cardinals have got it going the other way. All right, you've had to put up with me in this booth. I'm going to try and be simple this time and succinct. It simply has not been their night. No, I think that fumble's kind of indicative of how this whole evening's gone, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, they've, they've tried, <laughs> but nothing has ever really taken throughout the game. That's why they're down so big. So good field position for the Cardinals as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. It'll be Edmonds to begin the drive. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Again, they run with Edmonds. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him two on that run, and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. To throw is Murray. This is caught, it's Kirk. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era when we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. They'll try the jet sweep with Kirk. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. On second down, Edmonds. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working, but how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. Yo, 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 yo. Yo! 
from the gun on third down, Murray. This is caught. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. Edmonds. And he is in for six. Touchdown, Cardinals. Chase Edmonds taking it in for two yards out. And the Cardinals add on. So definitely a good day's work throwing the football. Very good day's work. A four touchdown passes. They're really pouring it on. Yeah, and so much for going into clock mode after getting that touchdown, right? Because you would think with the lead fourth quarter, they might actually do that. No chance. They've kept attacking and got another touchdown pass as a result. Now Prater to add the PAT. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was capped off by the Chase Edmonds touchdown run. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it will come out to the 25. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, punt the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's gonna be a long day for you. Wentz's throw complete here to Doyle, and he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course, you <laughs> gotta keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Meanwhile, Wentz's throw taken in by Pascal. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Shotgun now for Wentz. Over the middle, complete. It's Doyle. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. On first and ten, here's Wentz. He'll take a shot downfield for Pittman, and it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man, and you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Back to the air on second down. Wentz. 
Again, looking for Pittman, a better result here. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Wentz going to try and throw on third. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And down he goes, but the stiff arm utilized effectively there, and it helps him move the sticks. Well, that's just what you call a chain mover right there. Nothing fancy. Get the ball out to the back, and you're asking him to make a little bit extra out of maybe what is nothing, and he does exactly that, picks up the first down. I can't wait till we get to the point, partner, where we're not saying chain mover, but we're saying laser pointer picks it up for the first down. So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Here's Wentz to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Doyle. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. This has been a rough one, to put it mildly, for them. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Wins to throw again. And this pass broken up. Well, the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Mm. It looked good when he left his foot, but he kind of sliced it a little bit, and he winds up missing it wide right. Arizona's offense back out and ready to go. They have that feeling that has to be the best. You just go out in complete control of this game here for hopefully one final possession. And it's the culmination of preparation that began with something along the lines from the head coach of, we're going to win this weekend, and here's how we're going to get it done. And covered all the details that went into it. They practiced them. They went over them. They tweaked the game plan as the, as the week went on. And to find it all coming together and see it finish this way. Makes them happy. Oh, that's satisfying for them. <laughs> yeah, they were very, very good. Now the last stages of this one. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Another carry now for Edmonds. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. You got it. And a loss of three to bring up fourth.
Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone.